Hey guys, Anthony here with Advanced Vector. Today bringing you probably the final iteration of my first round of reviews for this Alienware M15 R3. I'm going to try to keep this one shorter. Uh, they've been getting a little longer out of hand, so I'm going to cut to the chase. I'm recording this after I have repasted and done some initial testing, and um, the TLDR is the thermals are better. They're not great. However, I am able to run at the um, stock, I'll say stock provided by Alienware core speed of 4.4 gigahertz for all cores uh, and maintain about a 95 to 96 degree Celsius uh, temperature for the CPU. Now, that's only the CPU. If I'm just using the CPU, I'm not doing anything with the GPU. Of course, as soon as I turn both of them on, bam, thermals peg up at 100 and clock speeds start dropping and all that other crazy stuff. Um, however, I consider this a huge, huge win. Um, previously, when I would run this test, of course, it would start thermally throttling and it would really only run at like 3.3 to 3.4 gigahertz. Um, and that's where it would sit and it would kind of discontinue to bounce up and hit that 100 to throttle down a little bit. You'd, you know, you'd drop down to 99 and it would think, oh, I can I can bounce back up and, and start running it a little higher before it started throttling again. But now, <clears throat> all day long, every day, I have my office. Now, now this is kind of the, the caveat with that is I have my office set at about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So a little bit chilly, uh, uncomfortably so. Um, you know, I'm just in a t-shirt and shorts, and uh, it was get, it was getting kind of cold. So I turned the temperature up in my office a little bit. I turned it up to like that 72 degree range, and um, you know, we were hitting we were hitting that thermal limit. Uh, after several minutes, the temperatures did rise back up to 100 degrees. However, the throttling was not so bad. I was still maintaining about 4.2 to 4.3 gigahertz, uh, which is really good. So it, it was throttling, but I guess not as bad. Um, so overall, uh, repasting this thing was awesome. The other thing I want to call out, and, and I think this could be a combination of things. So you don't have to watch my teardown video. It's long, and if you're already familiar with how all that stuff works, you know, it's just not going to be for you. But one thing that I did see when I tore that uh, down and I looked at the heat sinks, the heat sink for my GPU was actually mounted incorrectly. Um, there's kind of like a little copper uh, foil tray that sits around the uh, GPU die on there. And uh, it was it was off center just a little bit enough so that the corner of it was up on one of the standoffs that is set there for you to mount and screw the heat sink onto so essentially what has happened is if this is your uh, GPU die and this is the heat sink we normally want them to sit flat with each other however because there was a little bit of extra space uh, or I should say because the corner of one of the standoffs was covered the uh, the heat sink was lifted up a little bit and sure enough when I pulled that all the way off you could see a very thick layer of thermal paste here and something more normal along the other side so now that probably wouldn't necessarily have been interfering with the CPU the CPU is on a completely you know kind of on the other side of the board and all that other stuff and, and the mounting bracket is, is independent but uh I did notice some better better thermals with my GPU as well. I mean, already it was pretty good, so it would usually hit about that 75 to 76 degree Celsius range um, when I had it going full bore with the CPU going full bore. Uh, I did another test like that for about 30 minutes, and uh, it only got up to about 70 degrees. So that helped there. It could be a combination of the better thermal paste and the, you know, correctly mounting that on there. Um... So that's kind of the, the skinny on that. Now, now, if all you're here for is to know if the thermal paste helped, yes, it did. Um, did it make this machine all of a sudden miraculously function as well as a desktop with a custom water cooling loop? Absolutely not. But I think with intolerance, you know, they, they say, oh, yeah, we're boosting up to this and all this other stuff. Realistically... And under the under the right reasonable conditions, 68 degrees isn't you know uh, ambient temperature. 
you're right under 100 degrees, you're getting the full clock speed. So technically Alienware, to me, is producing a product that performs as advertised. Is it performant to what we typically want? No, I want my I want my CPU to run at 40 degrees Celsius no matter what, right? Um, and so <clears throat> anyways, so I um, – you know, take back a little bit of what I said. It would be nice if they just up front use better thermal paste. We're already spending so much money for these machines. I don't know why they're not using the good stuff to begin with. Um, for me, the manufacturer defect, I can understand how a lot of people think, oh, my gosh, that's so crazy, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, at the end of the day, who knows? I mean, I guess if everyone started coming out and saying they had that exact same issue, then, yeah, maybe there is an issue with their manufacturing. But uh, it's a one-off thing, man, uh, you know. It's never going to be perfect, and and if if that was it for me, then that's fine. You know, um, I, I'm not going to leave Alienware over it or anything like that, or say that their machines are trash because there was a uh, you know a slight mishap, and literally that little tray was canted, uh, you know, a centimeter. Um, that's just that's just not the kind of person I am. So. Uh, however, it, it did impact me, so that's kind of another thing where if you're having some problems, uh, take it apart. You got to look at your machine, figure out how it works, uh, and and you know you'll be able to identify those issues. If you're not capable of that, then take it to any computer shop in your town, and they should be more than capable of handling this teardown. Um, it actually wasn't that bad. I've definitely, uh, you know, usually it's nice when you can just pull the heat sinks and stuff off without having to take everything apart. But from all intents and purposes, I have completely torn down Alienwares in the past and put them all back together, replacing screens and all different kinds of stuff. And uh, this is pretty par for the course for what I would expect of tearing down a machine like this all the way and putting it back together. Um, even on the even on the easier end of that. So, all right. So the last thing I wanted to talk about here a little bit is what I have learned from all of this. So I have done a lot more research into processors and overclocking, and I've spent some time actually now um, in a utility uh, that one of you all pro provided called the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, and that has kind of opened my eyes and helped me direct my google searches more toward this you know in the past i've always I, I have done some i would say amateur overclocking at best um and and that really is just alienware command center moving the little slider around playing with stuff to see how i can get without really understanding what's going on in the back end and now do i really understand fully what's going on you know under the hood still no but i think at, at the very least to have a few more dials that i can click and it's starting to get a, a better picture so um, <clears throat> before we jump into that, though, what I want to talk about is really, um, is this a bad product? Uh, no, I think that Alienware, um, now that I've kind of corrected my thermal issue through, through paste and, uh, that mounting problem, I think that they have produced a product that lives up to everything that they described it as. Um, should you buy it? I think that question now is up to you. Are you willing to have a machine that, you know, runs hot when you're trying to do stuff with it or not? Um, if not, then really a compact gaming PC or a compact gaming laptop probably isn't for you. If you just have to have a PC that runs your um you know, your CPU and GPU going full bore at 60 degrees Celsius, then, um, you know, you're going to be carrying something that's that thick. That's just, it's just physics. Um, so, uh, other than that, though, really what Alienware is delivering is that this, to me, is actually a, a, a pretty decent product, product and I am going to keep it. And this is, this is why. So we're going to jump over here. Um... And hopefully that switched. Yep, it looks like it did. We're going to jump over here, and this is the Intel-produced product um, report for this processor. Here we have the i9-10980HK processor. And the one thing that I want to pull out here is everyone, you know, you want your thing. Oh, I want it to run at this speed, this speed, this speed, this speed. And realistically, guys, this thing is designed to run at 2.4 gigahertz. In fact, the i7's base clock speed is 2.6 gigahertz. Now, you only get six cores, but its base clock speed is faster, but its max turbo speed is slower. So let's talk a little bit about this max turbo frequency. And what that is is, oh, I need to peak for just a second, you know, do something 
uh, you know, a few seconds, and then it's going to peak down. This is not advertised as a speed that you're going to sit there and just chug away at numbers all day long. That number is the 2.4 gigahertz. So anything that you're able to achieve above 2.4 gigahertz is like, hey, you're getting extra. Um, the other thing that I want to call out here is the TDP of this is 45 watts, configurable up to 65. So when I had this thing chugging and I had um, my this Intel extreme tuning chart up here, we can look and see, even under idle loads right now, that um, TDP is sitting at like 34 watts. So, you know, that's that's kind of just idle. If we put it under light load, that'll go up a little bit. Now, if I, and it says it's configurable up to 65. So anything past 65 is really, you know, you're really starting to push stuff. So um, if I start my Furmark CPU burner here and we go back to this, it's going to take a second for my fans to ramp up. Actually, I'll just ramp those back up to full speed. And I apologize if you guys get a bunch of that feedback here. Um, we'll go to we'll go to full speed just for sanity's sake. Um, and in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this just so that it has time to kind of drop that temperature down and then slowly build up so I can kind of make my point. And all right, so I, I just, you know, and I'm going to kind of reset here. I'm not sure how all of that that worked out. Um, with recording and running that stress test because I'm doing this all on the Alienware. So um, what I want to say, guys, if that last little part kind of cut out, I apologize. But really wanted, what I wanted to prove here is that when we have this thing peaked um, and we can see, you know, our temperature did spike up there. I had to turn my, my loud fan profile on, all that other stuff. Um, but anyways, uh, this TDP is really what I wanted to look at here. And we can see that when I first kick that on, it kind of starts in humps, but it really gets down to that... Um, that 195 to 100 uh, watts, which if we come back over here, that's well above the manufacturer specifications for this. So uh, I think it's unfair of us as a community to judge Alienware or anyone for saying, um, you know, hey, uh, how come I'm not getting this speed all the time when this speed has always ever just been kind of a peak up do a little bit of work peak back down kind of a thing no one from intel um and or alienware even i think has ever said yes you'll be able to maintain 5.3 gigahertz all cores all the time um that's just not the case so this thing is performing it's performing well and i think for gaming you're not even going to ever really come close to enough utilization i think for gaming you'll find that happy medium now what i'm going to end up doing actually is is I think that what Alienware has done for these default clocks is actually a little aggressive. I really do. I think it's a little bit aggressive. Um, you know, they probably do that so they can get the fancy numbers and everyone kind of fluffs their numbers. You know, we all know in the vacuum of space, technically, this cell phone can, you know, talk to people that are 10,000 miles away. Um, but we don't live in the vacuum of space. And, and that's really what I want to bring down and how you can maybe make this machine perform better for you. So... Uh, if you haven't already, this Intel Extreme Tuning Utility is awesome. Um, and actually, before we move on, there's one thing that I do want to say. These temperatures, the only way I was able to get them was by undervolting a bit. And by a bit, I mean a lot. We can see here that my core voltage offset is negative uh, 0.135, which is pretty significant. If I put it up to... Uh, negative 1.4 uh, or I'm sorry negative 0 0.140 uh, it actually starts crashing on me it's not stable so this is like as low as I could see and this really does help a lot in regards to your temperature um, so you know there's some tolerance here this is this is pretty far but you might get 40 you might get 50 you might only be able to get 20 and that just kind of is manufacturing and the silicon in your chip and all that other stuff so Anyways, that is a crucial part of this as well. And by default, this is at zero. And when I put this to zero, temperatures go shooting through the roof. Um, it's, it's definitely better than before. But um, in my testing, I did have this set before and after I did the repaste. So all of that is exactly the same. And uh, that's when I was still noticing instead of being pegged at uh, 100 degrees Celsius and my um, core frequency only reaching up to like 3.3 or whatever, um 3.4 now um 
you know, I'm I before I was still able to get 100 degrees Celsius, but it was running at like 4.2, 4.3. So uh, definitely getting some more usage out of that. Anyways, guys, so there's this. Read about it if you don't know. I personally don't know enough about any of this stuff yet to like really give you solid advice other than to say – Take this from zero, slowly eke it down until your machine starts, you know, freaking out a little bit, and then back it off and bring it back into a more reasonable space. Now, the other thing that I noticed here is we have these uh, ratio multipliers, and basically uh, what I've been able to garner just from seeing, I, I haven't really read any documentation about this, but what it is is right now when all eight cores are active, so when we're going full bore on the CPU, it's only going to have a multiplier of 44. And on the back end, what that 44 turns out to be is 4.4 gigahertz. So these basically correspond to that. Now we can see up here, the default is 53. I currently have this set at 50. I was just doing some testing and whatnot. But realistically, guys, realistically, what I'm going to do, and I'll show you here, is I have decided, you know what, if I'm going all out, And if I have anything more than four cores running, I am totally satisfied with four gigahertz. Um, on the upper end, you know, five gigahertz, I think is plenty. That's what the i7 gives you. Why would I demand more from this than the i7? Um, you know, I, I'm getting two more cores than the i7 has, so I should be getting two more cores of compute. So I think, you know, at least this is the start for something more reasonable. So we can go ahead and click that apply button here. And what we're going to see and uh, I apologize if this kind of gets a little glitchy or whatever. Um, I can imagine that as I'm trying to record this with Streamlabs as well as do this CPU benchmark that it's not going to like it very much. Um, but I'm going to start this and we're going to see something crazy happen here. So we'll let it settle. Um, and in fact, I might even just slice this, this part out. So we're going to come back after a few minutes and we'll just take a look at this real quick. All right, guys. So I let that run for, I don't know, a minute maybe a little bit more than a minute. Um, hopefully you're back with me now. And, and this is what we can see out of this. As we look at these temperatures here, we can see, um, you know, temperature is purple along this left side here. We can see that uh, just by doing that, by dropping that down um, by 0.4 gigahertz really is what it is. Now we're running at 4 gigahertz um, at 100% utilization across all things. Now, uh, you know, we immediately get about a 10 degree Celsius drop. Um, and 4 gigahertz is still really respectable, especially for 8 cores. Now, there may be some situations where you want less cores and more speed. It just depends. You know, I don't know what that magic number is. I haven't done that kind of that deep of testing yet. But my point with this is, is 4 gigahertz is still a very respectable um, overclock. And if you, you know, we're doing transcoding and some other things like that, and you're sitting around 80 degrees, like for this machine, I feel like that's good. That's good. So, um, you know, how can we make this even better? Um, or how can you make it so that your thermals are a little better? Now, if you were gaming on 4 gigahertz, I, you know, you're gaming, even when I did ARC the other day, and that was running at 60% utilization, um, you're not going to be going 100%. So not only have you downclocked just a little bit, but if you put that in a real-world application, you're going to see even better. So all of a sudden, your temperatures might go from just constantly hitting that 100 degrees Celsius mark while gaming or just a little bit under to you might be running at that 75 to 80, which is definitely more comfortable um, than the 90 to 100 range. And I, and I doubt um, you know, if someone wants to do some benchmarking and prove me wrong, but I doubt that you will notice any difference in your gameplay, um, any noticeable human difference. Yeah, you might be able to clock it out over time and be like, well, I'm losing two frames, you know, every 10,000 frames on average, and, I, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that's, you know, who cares, um, quite frankly. So, I, I mean, I'm all about the practical and really practically, I don't think 4 gigahertz over 4.4 gigahertz is going to make a lick of difference on your game. Um, benchmarking and maybe transcoding videos and, and that kind of thing is, is where that's, we're going to see the biggest difference in that. Um, but for everyday use, your web page browsing is going to change, your Facebook, your YouTube, all of that is going to operate just fine on 4 gigahertz as it does on 4.4 gigahertz. So... 
What am I going to do? I would like things to run a little bit cooler yet. And so for my top four, I'm going to drop that down to 3.8 gigahertz. So when I'm going max speed, everything running, it's only going to run at 3.8 gigahertz. Anything above that, and I'll probably will drop these down a little bit just to be conservative. Um, if I'm only running one or two cores, 4.8 is fine. You know, I, I think that's fine if I have a single process that's really j jacking up there. Um, you know, the the cooling in this thing will be able to handle. It'll be able to handle it fine. Um, so realistically, guys, this is where I'm going to sit. Um, if I'm really in a situation where I'm just processing tons of data or something like that, 3.8 gigahertz is, is going to be fine. And that even in the gaming type of a situation... I don't think most games use more than four, maybe six processors. That's just not common enough yet, guys. Most of the time, they're only you know making these games assuming kind of that quad core situation optimally. But the minimum specifications for a lot of these things are, oh, you need an i3 or an i5. And a lot of those only have two physical cores anyway. I know some of the newer ones do have six but uh, that's still kind of a new thing, and we don't, you know, always necessarily make, you know, the the recommended specifications we make on the newest stuff. But uh, you know, they, they're not making games now that say, oh, you have to have an eight core processor. And so, um, you, you know, how much mileage are you actually going to get out of being able to boost those additional cores over that? Is uh, I think it's negligible. So um, we'll do one more quick. Um, well. I'm not even going to go over the thermals. I've kind of I've kind of done this before for this. Uh, this actually puts me at a place where I'm in the mid 80s for CPU, and that's when I have my GPU going full bore, um, and I'm fine with that because, like I said, it's just it's just not going to happen even when I'm gaming and stuff. Um, all right, guys. So that actually ended up being a lot longer than I wanted it to be, but hopefully, and let me turn my super loud fans off now. Um, so hopefully you guys got some information out of that. Hopefully we've all maybe brought our expectations down to something that's more reasonable. Now, I know a lot of people have said, oh, the MSI or the Razer can do this and that. And and I, I say, great. If there's a machine out there that you feel like is better, you should absolutely go for it. Um, there is tons of different laptops because there's tons of different people. Am I going to stick with this one? I think the answer to that for now is yes. Yes, I am. I still have another... 27 days to make that final decision whether I want to send it back. I certainly want to wait and see what happens after I get that uh, 2080 Max Q because the GPU is another factor in the heat and all this. And, you know, we haven't had any heat issues with the GPU specifically, but the additional heat that it creates definitely affects the CPU um, heat. And so this 2070 actually has a max TDP of 114 watts. And uh, I think the 2080 Max Q only has 90. Now, you know, so it only has 90 watts. And so some people are like, oh, that's not good. That's not whatever. But theoretically, and you're paying a ton more for it. Don't get me wrong, guys. You are paying a lot more for it. But what it does, it gets your heat down a little bit more. I think you do get a minuscule amount of performance gain over the 2070. Um, but really, really, it's 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 that heat. It's the efficiency. You are paying for more efficiency. You're saying, hey, I have something that's slightly the better or maybe just the same, um, but uh, 90 compared to 114, but it's, you know, whatever, 20% more efficient heat-wise uh, or electrically, I should say. So you got to pay for that. Um, is the 2070 right for you? Maybe. Um, maybe if you get it with the i7, you'll be just fine. Um, I think with the i9, I'm going to try the 2080 um, after tweaking and doing all the same stuff. I am expecting to see a better thermal output than I am even now. Hey, guys, I'm kind of recording this out of uh, reference, if you will. I'm actually, I actually have the video up in Premiere Pro, and I just realized that I didn't answer the standard question, so I'm recording this real quick so I can throw it in. Anyways, um, the, the real question here is, am I going to stick with the i9 or am I going to go for the i7? And um, personally, I'm going to stick with the i9. As you have seen in this video, I think I'll put this little segment toward the end. As you have seen in this video... 
I have been able to bring the temperatures under control. Now that being said, I have specific applications in mind where I feel like more cores, a higher thread count, is going to be more beneficial to me than a higher clock speed. What I mean when I say that is I'm talking about video transcoding um, when you're doing gaming and Twitch and trying to stream, as well as video transcoding and that kind of stuff and editing and whatnot when I'm in Premiere Pro and I'm editing these videos together. You like the one that you're watching. And um, having more cores, I think, is going to be more beneficial than having that higher clock speed because you're spreading all that work out across all the different cores instead of just asking a few cores to work super fast. So that's what it is for me. Um, I think if you don't want to dink around with it, and you just want to get a good gaming machine, then get the i7. It's, I think it's going to be fine, especially if you are willing to look at it and do even some of the tweaks that I've done for the i9. So I just wanted a short little kind of blip to get that information in there for you guys. We'll get back to the normal video now. So um, anyways, guys, I, I really I think that's going to wrap it up. Um, I, you know, I know that I've been getting a ton more questions, um, but I've been trying to answer those like in line in the comments. I know that doesn't really broadcast them out to everyone. Uh, maybe next weekend I'll circle back and do one final video. I'll kind of compile all the questions that you guys have over the week and uh, do another video there. I'm really hoping that over the course of this week I get that Dell technician out here that will swap my motherboard out so I get the 2080 and I can kind of do another round of um, – brief testing i'm getting better at it so i'm figuring out how to spit these videos out a little faster in regards to that type of stuff so be on the lookout for that um in the meantime guys definitely smash that thumbs up button for this video if you found anything in here that was helpful at all and uh you know subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when my next uh, video comes out for the alienware